previous videos, I explained what Esri Story Maps are, how to teach and learn with them, and why they are important and useful in education. Now we are in the middle of creating your own story map, part two. As I mentioned in the part one video about creating your own story maps, for the map tour story map, you only need to modify two files, the index.html and locations.csv file. For other templates, you need to modify these and other types of files, depending on the template. Before editing anything, I make a copy of the whole folder containing the subfolders and files. That way, if I make a mistake, I can always come back to a clean copy. Here's my clean copy. Remember that we talked about the three folders and the four files that you need to pay attention to when you are editing, in this case, the map tour template. First, let's modify the index.html file. I'm going to go ahead and open it up with just WordPad. And here it is. So what we've got here is a bunch of references to some JavaScript files, which again are in the folders that you've downloaded. So you don't need to tinker with those. What you need to tinker with are these things in here. For example, the title of your web page and a couple of other things. For example, the picture that you're going to be referring to underneath it. Now the template is a walk on the High Line. Remember, this is the High Line Trail in New York City. But you're going to modify that. In my case, I want to modify it to refer to each one of these landscapes or landforms. After I modify the index.html, notice that I've got my title as Map Tour, 10 Landscapes. Scrolling down, I left everything else alone. Notice right here I've got the byline as a tour of 10 landscapes across the USA from a spatial perspective. What force has created these landscapes and landforms in the past and continue to shape them today? Okay, 11 landscapes. They're too good to stop at 10. In other words, I, I didn't quite stop at 10. Excuse me, I really wanted 11. I also have the link t underneath there to the picture. In this case, I've got it up on Picasa Web. You may store your photos anywhere as long as they're publicly accessible. Then I've got a, a name here called Landscape's Greatest Hits and a description of the first one, which is Coral Pink Sand Dunes. The file is still locations.csv and we'll look at that in a moment. You may also want to pay attention to the base map you are using. ArcGIS contains a variety of excellent base maps, such as satellite images and so on. You can also, though, pull from thematic base maps. Here, since my goal is to illustrate landforms and landscapes, I want to use the USGS topographic maps as, by, as my base map. So, I changed the base map to USGS base map here. How did I find out that this was the URL for the base map? Well, I went to ArcGIS Online and added the USGS topographic base map. I then examined the metadata to determine the server URL for this map and copied it. Let me demonstrate. Here I am at ArcGIS Online. I'm going to start a map. I'm going to add and search for layers. USA Topo is the name, the shortcut name for the USA Topo maps, which is the USGS base. I'm done adding layers. See, now I've got a USGS Topo base. Let's just go ahead and zoom in on one of those topographic maps so you can see what I mean. Here we've got the 1 to 250,000 scale USGS topo base. And if we zoom in a bit, we're going to see the 1 to 100,000 in a moment. Here's the 100, 1 to 100,000 base. And if we zoom in even more, we're going to see the 1 to 24,000 scale USGS topo maps. These are exactly the kind of maps, because of these rich contour lines here, this, this content uh, for my landscapes and lands and landforms tour. Now if I go over here to the USA Topo Maps, I can show the item details. If I scroll down, see this right here? I've got a ArcGIS Server Manager and Web ADF URL. I also have a REST URL for ArcGIS Web APIs. This line right here is the line that I'm using in my story maps. So REST Services USA Topo Maps. That is exactly the line that I copied in here. So I substitute the default base map for the USGS Topo Base. Another thing I wanted to do is change the scale. 
when you are examining a whole continent, for example, like we're doing here in this map tour, you don't really see the topographic maps and the contour lines on those maps at that scale. So you don't get a good sense of the landforms. However, if you add one line to your file, your map will be zoomed in to the proper scale to see these. Remember when I mentioned that a little JavaScript knowledge would come in handy? See this line? Map Center and Zoom selected Geometry 14. The Center and Zoom method of the JavaScript API's map class takes two inputs. The geometry where you want to center the map and the tile level. The 14 is the tile level of the topographic map you are using. It corresponds to approximately 1 to 36,000 scale. The next largest scale, level 15, is 1 to 18,000 scale. What I want is level 14, 1 to 36,000 scale. So those are the only things that we're changing inside this index.html file. Let's turn our attention to the locations.csv file now. Here is the original locations.csv file. I'm going to go ahead and open it up with Excel. I could open it up in WordPad, and that's perfectly fine. It's just a little more difficult to keep track of, of your line breaks, and Excel formats them into columns or fields, and so Excel is a little bit cleaner of a method to use. Just make sure when you're in Excel to save it out as a CSV and not an Excel spreadsheet. Here's my locations.csv. Remember, the original template came from the High Line Trail in Manhattan, in New York City. I've got a name field, I've got a description, an icon color, red or blue, a longitude, a latitude, a URL, this is the URL for the location of where your photograph is stored. In this case, remember the default uh, looks like from Flickr. And then a thumbnail URL reference. Now, remember, you can use these uh, URLs to point to any location that the public can actually see your photo. So it could be Flickr, it could be Picasso Web, it could be other locations, as long as they're publicly accessible. Here is my edited locations.csv file, here opened in Excel. I've got a number, I've got a name, and the first one is Sand Dunes, Coral Pink Sand Dunes, Utah. A description, which is the text that appears next to the name. I also have an icon color. In my case, they're all going to be red dots on the map, or red little icons. I've got a longitude, so anything west longitude or south latitude has to be negative. So a longitude and a latitude field. A URL where the photograph is stored. And a URL where the thumbnail images are stored. So, that's what I've got inside my locations.csv. Once you're done with all of your edits, upload the whole folder containing the files and subfolders to your web server. So in my case, I've got a folder called Map Tour 10 Landscapes. Inside there, I've got all the files that I need. So this whole folder, I'm going to move it to my web server. Or I can use my own computer if my computer doubles as a web server.